Hello everyone. Welcome to our PMP exam question and answer solving session for March. So just like the previous months in today's session, we'll be solving some medium to high difficulty level PMP exam questions very similar to your actual exam. Also, if you have not watched the previous Q&A sessions, I would highly encourage you to check them out. Okay. I'm sure that you will find them immensely helpful for your PMP exam preparation. I will link the entire playlist in the description section of this video. Now, if you are preparing for the PMP exam, you can use today's class to assess how well you are prepared for the exam. Okay. So out of the five questions that we'll be solving today, the target would be to get all the five out of five questions correct, right? However, the minimum expectation is that you should get at least four out of the five questions correct to consider yourself fairly well prepared for the PMP exam. Now, anything less than that, you might need a bit more preparation. Okay. So give this video a like, get a pen and a paper and let's get started with question number one. Also on a quick note before we get started, guys, I hold weekly webinars on the PMP exam preparation for the 2024 syllabus. OK, so there are multiple slots available. We go through these kind of topics where we talk about the basics, how to start preparation, how to prepare a study plan, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's a completely free webinar to attend. So if you have not done that already, I would urge you to go ahead and sign up for this. OK, the link will be in the description section of this video. Also, if you have not downloaded this ebook, you can find a download link for this ebook in the description section of this video. As as well okay so these are all free resources and i would highly encourage you to utilize these resources during the initial starting phases of your exam preparation okay now let's start with question number one so that's question number one guys please read the question and try to answer it before we solve this together so the drill will remain the same as of the previous month's session okay so please try to solve this question right so let's get started a project manager is inducted into a project during the execution stage. OK, so the project has moved from initiation to planning and the project is now in execution. After a review of the project scope for schedule estimation purposes, it becomes evident that a few key deliverables were omitted during the decomposition procedure. OK. What should be the next step for you as the project manager? Now to help you solve this question, you need to know what is a decomposition, right? So decomposition is the process of breaking down the scope of a project into manageable chunks or manageable work packages. And the output of a decomposition process is typically a work breakdown structure or WBS. OK, so if you have that clarity, it becomes much easier for you to tackle this question. So let's summarize what's happening here as a part of the project. You are a project manager. Let's say you have been inducted into the project during the execution stage. You have done a review of the scope because you were trying to estimate the schedule of the project. OK, so the project is already in the execution stage, but you are still doing an assessment just to understand that whether you are on track or off track with respect to the baseline schedule. OK, so now, however, when you were doing that process, it becomes evident to you that a few key deliverables were omitted during the WBS creation phase. OK, so what should you do as a project manager? Let's look at options. Option A, validate the scope with key stakeholders to understand the suitability of adding back the missed scope items. OK, you can hold this option for now. OK, you can say that, OK, Ray, I need to validate and understand that whether these scope elements are really necessary and whether they are suitable to be added into the project back. OK, let's hold this option for now. Let's look at option B, negotiate additional time with the customer for project completion. OK, now this is incorrect, right? I hope none of you have selected this option because understand this, guys. You have identified a few key deliverables which were omitted. That is perfect. But under the unless you do a good assessment of how it will impact your schedule, you can't go ahead and start negotiating an additional timeline with the customer because the first question the customer will ask you when you go forward with the request is that, OK, how much time you need more to complete this project? And you don't have that answer, right? Because you have not done the assessment. So on what basis you will approach the customer to ask for an extension of the deadline? OK, that doesn't make sense. So option B is definitely incorrect. Let's look at option C. Include the missed scope items within the WBS. OK, that links back to this uh, decomposition procedure. 
and recalculate the total project duration okay now this links back to the logic which we were providing for option number b that with this exercise where you are including this missed scope items and calculating the total project duration now you have a definitive answer whether the project is on track or off track or let's say very highly off track with respect to the baseline schedule etc etc okay so here in option c you are basically doing an assessment so this looks like a good option let's hold this option for now as well let's look at option d assess the need to add the missed scope elements using the expert judgment okay this is a bit of a long shot guys right and the reason for that is you can assess the need for adding this miss scope using expert judgment or whatever tool you want to use okay but in the end you need to understand what the project is asking from you okay the project is asking from you that look some of the key deliverables were missed okay and these were initially planned to be included in the project now will it make sense or will it be productive for you to go and reassess the importance of those deliverables again because it can be safely assumed that when the project kicked off from the planning to the execution stage probably that assessment was already done right the deliverables were already key or critical at that point okay now just getting an expert judgment to revalidate that of course you can do that but i don't think it's a productive use of the time of the project manager or for the team now this option is not totally incorrect but there are better options to choose from and as i always say in my monthly sessions that in your pmp exam always go with the best option okay so on that note we can eliminate option d now option d could be eliminated on another note as well that okay why do i need to use expert judgment suddenly right i can go and take a feedback from the stakeholders itself okay so for example that can link back to option a so why i need expert judgment what additional let's say data points will be given to me by doing an expert judgment now okay since i have identified this so probably that option doesn't stand okay so option d is off the table let's look at option a and option c now if you closely look at option a guys you need to link this back to the 49 process chart okay so let me take you to the 49 process chart and help you understand how having a overall understanding of this 49 process chart can help you eliminate incorrect answer choices in your pmp exam okay so this is the 49 process chart right so let's look at scope management because we are talking scope management right so what you do is you plan the scope management then you collect requirements then you define the scope create the wbs yes that is the decomposition okay and then during executing do you see any activities happening in scope management during executing none right because actually here what you do is you execute the scope which you have already created you execute these wbs elements right but in the monitoring and controlling phase you validate the scope and you control the scope okay now note that this task of validating scope is in the monitoring and controlling phase after you have created the wbs but if we link back to our scenario what we were discussing is there were some gaps identified during the wbs creation process right so some gaps identified during the planning stage you have identified it in the execution stage when do you do validation you do validation when actually you have completed the scope and you are taking a feedback from the customer just to be on the same page that whether they have received what they have signed up for at the beginning right that is the basic reason of validating the scope and that is to ensure that the customer is getting what they have signed up for okay or what was the initial expectations now if you link this task which is the validate scope which is in the monitoring and controlling phase with the question scenario you will see that the question is telling that the project is in the execution stage right but it is asking you to validate the scope do you do validation of scope in the execution stage no right we just saw it in the 49 process chart there is no scope definition or let's say there is no scope element in the execution stage of the project the only scope element which you have in the execution stage is you actually go and execute the scope and the monitoring and controlling process start in parallel to the execution stage where you go and validate the scope and more importantly guys you need to understand that you validate a scope which is completed okay you do not validate a scope which has not even started to be executed right it makes common sense how will you validate something which is not yet prepared right you need to have something substantial to go to the customer and talk about the validation and assessment etc etc right so going by that logic does this option make sense to you that you are validating a scope which is not yet prepared okay with the key stakeholders during the execution stage which ideally should have been done in the monitoring and controlling stage to understand the suitability of adding back the missed scope elements again it links back to option d as well that there is no point of reassessing or let's say doing that rework of reassessing a scope element which we all know that was missed in the initiation or let's say missed in the planning stage let's say not in the initiation but in the planning stage okay so this is a bit of 
a futile exercise which is not correct okay so the correct answer to this question is option c which is to include the missed scope elements within the wbs first which is the part of this decomposition procedure and recalculate the total project duration now it might well be the scenario that once you have recalculated it you might be in a very comfortable position knowing that okay whatever the delay has been created that can be managed with the risk buffer which you already have put in the schedule right so you need not to go to the customer and you can manage it within your remit okay so that kind of an observation might come as well that okay you need to ask and go for a, let's say four weeks or extension on the deadline and when the customer asks that okay why do you need it you can give them that rationale and you can give them your assessment okay of course it will be a learn from experience to understand that okay what we can do differently in future to avoid missing such key scope elements or critical scope elements but that is another discussion however going by the logic that we have discussed for all the four options option c looks the most reasonable and the most rational approach to me as the project manager so if i was writing my pmp exam i will go with option c and the correct answer to this question is option c if you are preparing for your pmp exam guys i would suggest that you check out my pmp exam preparation courses on udemy all the courses are very highly rated amongst the students and many pmp aspirants like you have passed their pmp exam with the help of these courses all the links will be provided in the description section of this video and now let's move on to question number two right so question number two guys this is the question so this is another question which will again start the debate that okay how much memorization is required for the pmp exam so if you have not watched my memorization video i would strongly recommend that you go and check that video as well okay so that is an important aspect which you need to keep in mind for your pmp exam in terms of understanding then how much do you really need to memorize for your pmp exam and to solve such questions which you see on screen now how much memorization you need okay so let's solve this question i'll pause here Take a shot at it before we come back and solve this together. Right, so let's get started. The project manager is reviewing the following 12 month trailing cost performance index, which is CPI trend chart for a project. Okay, so you see that it is from month one to month 12. So that's a trailing 12 month performance indicator. So, for example, if you are on month 13, you are reviewing the performance of the project in terms of, of CPI, which is cost performance index from month one till month 12. Okay what should be your best course of action in this scenario and there are four options provided now to answer this question guys you tell me how much calculation or how much formula memorization is required right it is near to zero right because to answer this question at least from let's say a mathematical standpoint what you only need to know is the formula of cpi which is earned value okay which is ev okay so ev by actual cost ac right so that is the formula of cpi now the inference part which is more critical and that's where the pmp exam will focus is that when a cpi is greater than one okay what does it mean okay it means that your earned value your numerator is greater than your actual cost which is denominator okay which means that you are doing good in your project or you are exceeding the cost performance baseline of your project okay so basically you are under spending okay so you are doing good in your project however if the cost performance index is less than one what does it mean it means that your actual cost is high and it is higher than your earned value so you are actually overspending in your project and from a metric standpoint your project is red when it comes to cost performance okay so cpi less than one is a bad scenario cpi greater than one is a good scenario if we oversimplify the interpretation of cpi now if you see this project which has started from month one and moving on to month 12 you see that for the first few months okay which is from month one to let's say month five the cpi was greater than one okay which means the project was performing well however from month six onwards there is a downward trend in your cost performance index chart okay so it is going down 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 and down okay so that means the project at the point of month 12 is at a cpi of 0.78 which is like pretty bad okay so which means that you have grossly overspent in your project now once you have understood this chart you are now in a good position to look at the answer options okay what should be the best course of action in this scenario option one put forward a change request for additional resources okay this is incorrect because putting additional resources means that there is a highly likely scenario that there will be additional cost coming with the resources as well 
whether it is outsourced it is also definitely then an additional cost because you need to pay the external company or the supplier who will be providing you the resources even if it is internal within the company the salary or let's say the cost of those resources will be cross charged to your project if you have been a project manager you know how it works how cross charges works between departments to departments okay so definitely adding a scenario will add cost to your project and that is a far worse situation to have compared to what you are already in in the current scenario so that is why option a is incorrect let's look at option b crash the project timeline this is also incorrect because if you have studied your pmp exam syllabus you know that crashing almost always comes with a upcharge in your cost okay and also there are issues with respect to quality there are risks with respect to scope etc etc okay so those are secondary aspects but the primary aspect of crashing which you need to know is crashing almost always comes with additional cost okay so that is why option b is also incorrect because you cannot select an option which will involve additional cost because that will take your cost performance index further down right so that is why option b is incorrect let's look at option c plan to utilize management reserve funds okay so you may say that okay Ray, i'll be using the management reserve funds and i will be supplying the let's say deficit from this management reserve funds let's hold this option for now option d put forward a change request to revise the cost baseline okay this is also a plausible option that you can put forward and say that hey look whatever analysis i have done it has come to light that we will not be able to meet this uh, deficit and that is why i need some extra funds to meet this deficit and this is my exception report or my one pager to support that however if you look at option c and option d now and if you look closely at option c what it is essentially saying is you use your management reserve funds now you need to understand what is a management reserve fund so let's first quickly go and understand what is a management reserve okay now if you look at this picture which you see on screen now you will see that the management reserve is something which is over and above your cost baseline okay you will see such kind of a diagram in your process group practice guide as well okay so what you need to understand from this diagram is your overall contingency reserve is within your remit as a project manager but however if you are going to involve your management to mobilize this management reserve that will require a greater level of escalation and you definitely need to go through a change management procedure to mobilize these management reserve funds okay now your situation as a project manager is much better off to use the contingency reserves first before going into the management reserves okay that is all you need to know from a concept standpoint with respect to your understanding of management reserves versus contingency reserves now if you go back to this question option c is telling that you need to utilize your management reserve funds okay so that is definitely incorrect so the correct answer to this question is option d which is to put forward a change request to revise the cost baseline and once that change request is approved you can revise the cost cost baseline and of course you can use your contingency reserves okay mind it not the management reserves but the contingency reserves to pull in some money which is required to meet this deficit okay so the correct answer to this question is option d now one thing before we close off this question guys if you see it option d which is telling you to put forward a change request to revise the cost baseline this is an option which if you see in isolation might look to you as not a good option right because someone might argue if they look at this option on a standalone perspective and not in context with the other options someone can argue that okay change request is my last resort because i am revising the cost baseline and it is a strict no no for the project manager unless absolutely necessary okay agreed that is correct okay but that is only correct if you view this statement of option d in isolation however as we have discussed in our previous monthly sessions that when you solve a pmp question you should always look at an option with respect to context of the other options as well okay because in your pmp exam you are not expected to select the right answer okay mark my words very carefully guys you are not expected to select the right answer but you are expected to select the best possible answer so there is a very fine line of difference between a right answer and a best possible answer okay so going by that understanding we have safely eliminated option a option b and option c on solid grounds and that is why the correct answer to this question is d which is probably not ideal but going by the four options that we have this is the best option we can go for as part of this question solving scenario okay so the correct answer is option d if you are liking the video guys please press the like button your support goes a long way to help this channel grow also your likes and comments help me to understand that you value such educational content and motivates me to prepare more such videos like these to help you with your pmp exam and now let's move on to question number three right so question number three guys 
please read the question and try to answer it before we solve this together you can pause the video here if you wish to right so let's get started the customer has put forward a request to include a new design legislation for a bridge construction project okay so essentially it's a change request that the customer wants a new design legislation for a bridge construction project which is a mandatory step required by the project manager before this could be added to the project's work plan okay and the keyword here is mandatory which is let's say a go or a no go scenario okay so basically a red or green light scenario okay now let's summarize this overall scenario that you are a project manager okay and your customer is coming to you and asking for a change request that a new design legislation should be included in your bridge construction project that is perfectly fine but as a pm what you need to do mandatorily okay before you can add it to your team's work plan so option a validate the request okay let's hold this option let's come back to it in some time option b perform decomposition of the new scope to assess complexity okay let's hold this option as well Let's look at option C, ensure approval from the key subject matter experts or SMEs as identified in the project management plan. Okay, so that looks like a plausible option as well that you need to ensure your approvals from your subject matter experts before you include this new design legislation into your construction project. And option D, call a meeting with the customer to understand the need for this change request. Okay, so I can eliminate this option safety guys. Okay, because calling a meeting with the customer when the customer has already come back to you and mentioned to you that they want a new design legislation there is basically no need to cross question and rationalize with the customer again you can definitely do that but that may not be a productive use of your time as a project manager and it may not be a productive use of your customer's time as well okay so let's eliminate option d on solid grounds so we are left with option a b and c now if you look at option a link back to the learning which we had in the first question right it is saying that validating the request okay now again going back to the same premise that we have discussed that validating a scope element comes in the monitoring and controlling phase okay and even more important validation is done after something substantial is ready for validation right you can't validate something which is out in the thin air right so that is the reason please go back and watch question number one as well as part of the explanation it goes with the same logic for option a as well in this question that validating the request at this point where the request has just come and you need to do an assessment so assessment is very different from validation guys okay i hope you understand that so validating something which has just come to you whether you are in the planning or in the execution stage now will not make any sense if nothing substantial is ready for validation okay so option a is out of the table and it's an incorrect answer choice let's look at option b perform decomposition of the new scope to assess complexity okay so you can do that but is it something which is mandatory okay is it something which is like let's say a red or green scenario probably not okay now i will help you explain why it is not the correct option by going back to the 49 process chart and i will hereby emphasize more on the importance of let's say understanding the logical flow of the 49 process chart to help you eliminate wrong answer choices okay. now if you go back to the 49 process chart guys you will see here that you have to do plan scope management first okay then it comes to collect requirements then it's define scope then it's create wbs so there is a very strong finish to start relationship between these elements okay and when i say that i have to emphasize that you cannot create a wbs before you have defined a scope right now this can be refined of course but initially this has to follow a finish to start relationship okay now you can talk about it as a refine meant but if you go back to the answer option which you will see for this question for option number b it is saying that you need to perform a decomposition of the new scope to assess complexity okay now if you link option b to this 49 process chart it says that you perform decomposition which is you create the wbs after you have collected the requirements okay so the requirements has come okay which is the requirement which has been provided to you by the customer about the new design legislation and you need to go and create the wbs okay that is incorrect guys you first have to define the scope of that requirement so what essentially option b is missing it is missing a step of the scope definition which is an offshoot or which is let's say an activity which will come after the requirement is gathered from the customer it is directly jumping into creating the wbs this is first of all not mandatory 
okay and secondly it is defining the overall principle of a finish to start relationship between these activities okay so if you have not watched my 49 process chart video i would urge you to go ahead and watch that video as well to help you understand the logical flow between these 49 processes of your process group practice guide now if we come back to this question going by that logic performing a decomposition is not mandatory and secondly you can do the decomposition but you need to first define the scope which is coming out of a new design legislation which is not a scope but a requirement okay very important this is not a scope yet it is still in the requirements phase so that is why you need to understand the key difference between the activities of collecting requirement and the activity of defining scope in the 49 process chart so option b is a very close option guys but it is incorrect so if you are a pmp aspirant who has been following my monthly q a sessions you will be easily able to eliminate such options in your actual pmp exam so the correct answer to this question is option c which is to ensure approval from your key subject matter experts as identified in the project management plan now you can re-emphasize this action by the 49 process chart as well okay so if you go to the 49 process chart you will see that you have to plan your scope management first okay which is a scope management plan which is part of your project plan per se okay which is in the integration phase and once you have planned the scope management you have collected the requirements you define the scope and when you define the scope essentially each of your let's say owner of the scope signs off your scope management plan and that is when you say that the scope management plan is approved you as a project manager cannot approve a scope management plan right it is conflict of interest the scope management plan has to come from your subject matter experts or let's say your point of contact from the respective departments and that is when you go ahead to the next activity of creating the wbs or decomposition or work breakdown structure okay so i hope you have understood that right if not please rewind the video and feel free to watch the section again where i have done the explanation of each of those four options so the correct answer to this question is option c which is to ensure approval from the key smes as identified in the project management plan if you are finding this practice session helpful guys make sure you subscribe to my channel pmp with ray for more such videos for your pmp exam preparation okay Subscribing to this channel doesn't cost you anything, but it really helps with extending the reach of this channel to other PMP aspirants like you. And now let's move on to question number four. Right. So question number four, guys, please read the question and try to answer it. You can pause the video here if you wish to. Right. So let's get started. A product development cycle is approximately 80% complete. Okay. However, the legal team has highlighted that some of the key elements which the product uses infringes on the copyright laws of the country okay so basically a project governance scenario where you as let's say the product owner here you are into a product development cycle that cycle is nearly 80 percent complete let's say a part of the feature or let's say the full project doesn't matter okay as long as it is within the cycle of the product development it is 80 percent complete however your legal team has come and highlighted that some of the key elements which you are using infringes copyright laws in the country you are located or in the country where the project is happening okay what could be the appropriate way forward for the product owner okay so let's look at the options one by one option a perform a mvp or a minimum viable product so you will get such kind of abbreviations in your pmp exam these are very common abbreviations do not expect pmi to give you the explanation of such common abbreviations okay so mvp is minimum viable product perform a minimum viable product analysis to identify minimum releasable features okay you can say that this option looks like a reasonable option that what i'll do is i will try to dissect the product feature and see that okay if i can eliminate the items which infringes the copyright and still can retain a minimum usable product which i can show to the customer or which can help me to go to the next sprint or the next cycle so basically whether the product will still be functioning if i eliminate these kind of items which infringes the copyright laws okay that is what the option is saying looks like a good option to me but let's park this option here for now and look at the other options option b redo the product development cycle eliminating the element which infringes copyright okay that is incorrect guys you can definitely redo that entire thing but it is a not productive use of your time or let's say the time of your product team right because first if you are not doing an assessment that how such kind of uh, copyright issues is impacting your project and you are directly going back to your initial phases of product development and starting everything afresh on a clean slate 
you can do it but you are missing a very critical step of assessing the impact of a risk or assessing the impact of an issue in this scenario right you have to do an assessment first before you take any step okay i discuss this a lot in my 35 pdu class as well that you need to do an assessment before you take an action okay very important however option b is violating that principle that it is not telling you to assess it first it is just telling you to go back to the drawing board and start everything afresh which is incorrect okay so option b is out of the table option c is terminate the sprint cycle and disband the project team this is incorrect guys right i hope none of you have selected this option so it is totally out of the blue and basically it will question your authority or your credibility as the product owner if you are disbanding a team or terminating a sprint cycle when an issue has happened this is not something which is expected so i hope none of us have selected this option Let's look at option D. Perform pestle analysis to identify countries where the product does not violate applicable laws. Okay, so for that you need to understand what is a pestle analysis, right? So please go back to your PMBOK seventh edition and read up the definition of pestle analysis. So basically, what pestle analysis does is it basically classifies an issue or let's say classifies a macroeconomic condition with respect to political, economical, sociological, technical, legislative, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so it is a let's say risk assessment tool which you can do when a macroeconomic factor is happening in your project okay now the tool is okay this is let's say a factor which has happened in your project let's say an issue which has happened in your project that you have uh, let's say unknowingly infringed upon some copyright laws but is this a macroeconomic factor probably not right so macroeconomic factors could be like taxation changes could be like wars okay could be like floods could be natural calamities could be let's say elections okay so these are macroeconomic changes now to do a pestle analysis to identify countries where the product does not violate applicable laws can give you name of some countries but you can't change the destination country of a product right so for example you were developing a product on china and you can't say that okay now since i have violated some copyright laws in china i will launch the product in let's say india or in japan or in united kingdom right so this is totally a different population different target group so that's totally a random proposition right so that is why option d is incorrect okay however as a learning please go back and study pestle analysis from your pmbuk 7th edition look at your appendix of the pmbuk 7th edition it is arranged alphabetically pick up the term pestle analysis from that appendix go back and study the same from your pmbuk 7th edition that's a homework for you okay so that is why option d is incorrect option c is incorrect option b is incorrect and the correct answer to this question is option a which is to perform a minimum viable product analysis to identify the minimum release features and i think that was something which we are discussing at the very beginning that you eliminate those items which are infringing the copyright laws or let's say you try to replace that and see that if you can use something which is uh, non copyrighted material just to replace that and still maintain that functionality or let's say totally eliminate it and see that if the product is still working and then go back to the customer with a minimum viable product and then it gives you time to do a reassessment and find alternative options okay so that is also something which is a pragmatic approach as a product owner when you are managing such a scenario okay so the correct answer to this question is option a i hope you are finding this exercise helpful right remember the target is to get all the five out of five questions correct okay however the minimum expectation is to get at least four out of the five questions correct so here comes the fifth and the final question. All right, so question number five, guys. Please read the question and try to answer it before we solve this together. So the drill will remain the same. Let's go for it. You can pause the video here if you wish to. Right, so let's get started. A legal firm plans to develop an application which could be used by customers to apply for patents, okay? The sponsor wants the product to have four tiers, the basic tier, intermediate tier, advanced tier, and enterprise tier, okay, with stepped up subscription packages, okay. So basically, uh, there will be four tiers. The basic tier might be free, or let's say there might be a minimum charge applicable to the basic tier. The intermediate tier will be a bit costlier than the basic tier. The advanced tier is a bit more costlier than the intermediate tier, and the enterprise tier is the most costliest or let's say the most premium product okay and these will be like sort of subscription packages we can assume that it will be monthly subscription packages okay so which could be an ideal approach to execute this project so 
very straightforward waterfall incremental agile and iterative okay now to answer this question correctly you should have very very clear understanding of the different types of approaches of project management such as waterfall or predictive incremental agile and iterative okay so if you have that you can answer this question in less than 30 seconds okay but let's take some time and understand these four options one by one waterfall right so waterfall is something which is like a start to finish relationship between each and every phase okay so civil construction projects mechanical projects projects which are very clear cut let's say scope elements okay very clear cut start and end of each phase these can follow waterfall approaches okay now can this follow waterfall approach probably not right because it is an application uh, it has four tiers there are incremental values getting added with each and every tier okay and it is a new application which is getting developed so probably let's say thumb rule ballpark scenarios waterfall projects doesn't work with such kind of scenarios where you have incremental project delivery okay basically probably you have understood which is the correct answer to this question by now right <laughs> but anyways waterfall is incorrect okay it is not the correct answer choice because of the reasons that we talked about incremental okay that is what we are talking because if you see this transition of product feature from basic to intermediate intermediate to advanced and advanced to enterprise is a key feature of incremental project cycle okay you have a minimum viable product which is the mvp which is your basic feature here let's say you add a delta to it you go to intermediate you add another delta to it go to advanced and when i say delta i say added product features okay if you move on to enterprise it is another added delta right you will see many software packages or many subscriptions in the internet which are based on this pricing model okay microsoft office 365 or let's say ms project it also i think has such kind of a model which can be used as an example so these kind of stepped up models which are incremental value additions the best type of project management approach is to have a incremental project management approach okay so that is the correct answer to this question agile probably yes probably not you can use agile you can say that okay Ray, i will be applying agile here starting with a very open-ended and exploratory scope and trying to drill it down and make it a more basic or more predictable scope in the end that might be agile that might be hybrid okay questionable but you can still use it but again i go back to my same premise saying that when you are solving a pmp question you should go with the best possible option agile is not the best possible option here because this question scenario is giving you a test tell example of a incremental product feature so you cannot look at answer options which will not link to this kind of a incremental project management scenario so agile is incorrect iterative again that is incorrect as well because in iterative what you can do is you do basically a prototype right you keep on refining the prototype before you actually come up with something which is acceptable and then you build on the prototype so the prototype building can follow a iterative approach now once the prototype is finalized and it moves on to the actual construction it can go into an incremental approach so the project can flow from a iterative approach to a incremental approach once a prototype gets finalized okay so that is a, another learning point which you need to keep in mind when you are studying such kind of cycles such as an iterative cycle for this question right however going by the logic that we have discussed this cycle which is a delta delta cycle is not a iterative cycle it is clearly an incremental cycle where you have developed the mvp or the minimum viable product in the first scenario and you are in increasing and adding features to it as deltas okay to go into additional pricing or additional product tier models okay so that is incremental that is definitely not iterative so the correct answer to this question is option b which is incremental so that's the end of the quiz guys let me know in the comment section below how much you were able to score okay i'd be very interested to know that also if you have scored less don't get demotivated okay you just need a bit more practice and a thorough analysis of your mistakes so that you get to know about your knowledge gaps now to help you practice more and eventually get better i am linking here the entire playlist of our monthly practice sessions for the pmp exam questions and answers Please check if you have missed any of the monthly sessions and make sure you practice with me in those sessions as well. I'll see you there.